hi everyone in this video i will explain how to write the results section i know that it is a very critical part uh, in a research paper uh, you all know that also uh, writing research paper uh, is a very difficult process uh, in which uh, writing results and discussion uh, parts are very crucial for your publication to be accepted by the reputed journals okay uh, in this video i will explain the different uh, elements that comes under the result section and many students they struggle uh, writing the result section because uh, uh, they find a lot of dissimilarities uh, in the result section of uh, different uh, journals so that's why it becomes very difficult for the uh, students to have a common idea uh, the general idea about the result section so in this video i will try to explain the general uh, structure for the results uh, section so it is a standardized uh, uh, standardized structure for any uh, standard uh, journal okay so the major reason uh, for students uh, uh, to have a confusion with this result section also uh, result section is uh, some journals uh, they they find the results and discussion sections also together okay so in this video uh, let's uh, focus on only result section uh, next in our next video i will explain the discussion part how to write that okay so if you follow this uh, particular uh, template or the particular uh, blueprint to write your result section so you can write very uh, very uh, better your result part so first uh, you have to mention the parameter uh, so i mean parameter uh, in the mat uh, parameter in the sense so i mean to say that no your uh, research question so usually you uh, write your research question so for your research question you will have the null hypothesis uh, and also the alternative hypothesis so so you have to uh, mention your <coughs> exactly your uh, um, alternative hypothesis uh, or you can generally write your the research question directly okay that is uh, you generally call it the parameter okay okay so in support of uh, your research question you find so many uh, evidences uh, you need to have the evidences for example you your uh, alternative hypothesis or null hypothesis like that uh, effect of uh, metals on uh, anti uh, on a uh, oxidative markers and uh, or antioxidative markers of uh, some organisms so there to support that particular uh, um, hypothesis you need to have evidences supporting evidences okay so for example in this case csbd is antioxidative uh, marker is one antioxidative marker so so the effect of metal on the sbd activity so this is a parameter so first you have to write the purpose of the experiment so usually we write this purpose of this uh, experiment uh, in met method section itself though we write uh, in the method section so we have to uh, write the purpose again so that uh, readers uh, when they read your uh, result section so they don't need to look into again the method section to know the purpose of uh, the purpose of uh, that particular parameter okay so for example here uh, we can write uh, uh, the purpose like uh, this study is conducted to evaluate the effect of uh, different uh, concentrations of metal on enzyme activity so so that is the uh, way we write or we start our the results section so in generally uh, some uh, in some articles there you also see mentioning of uh, the method that they used okay so example uh, enzyme inhibition method or qpsr method or western blot method is are used to evaluate the effect of different concentrations of metal on the enzyme activity so we remind again what is the method that we have used and what is the purpose of this particular uh, uh, experiment so that we mention okay <coughs> after that we'll write the experimental approach though we uh, mentioned this experimental approach also in our uh, method section so it is again very good idea of writing uh, the experimental approach in the result section it's not in detail in a concise way you uh, present your experimental approach for example enzyme activity in the blood was measured 
uh, in the blood was measured after the organism exposed to different metal concentrations so that is the way you have to mention your the experimental approach so that uh, they can understand what exactly uh, the uh, what exactly uh, about uh, uh, that that means what exactly the data uh, that tells uh, about your uh, research work okay if multiple methods are used for a for a, uh, a particular parameter so to support a particular uh, parameter so if multiple methods are used so you have to write all these uh, in a sequence suppose if uh, western blood method is used again uh, to further confirm the enzyme activity or to confirm uh, uh, the gene expression of a particular gene so for that uh, so we write all the all these uh, uh, multiple methods in a sequence with respect to that particular parameter then we will write the key finding in some journals uh, there you find directly uh, the authors they mention the their key finding and then they start uh, talking about uh, their findings okay so the basic information whatever you provide so uh, the purpose of experimental experimental approach so all these you mention in already you are you are you mentioned them in your method section but uh, <clears throat> mentioning again in that result section makes the uh, reader to understand your uh, work in better way okay next uh, quantitative data so regarding your key findings see suppose the key finding means uh, here uh, you can say that metal uh, some metal has caused uh, uh, inhibition of the enzyme activity that is the key finding okay so or you can say the higher the con highest uh, the higher the concentration of the metal x the greater the inhibition of the <coughs> enzyme activity like that you, you have you got your finding now you, you uh, give the quantitative information of that particular the particular finding so you give the all the values of the enzyme activity what it what is the activity of that enzyme at high concentration what is the activity of that enzyme at the low concentration what is the uh, what is the activity of this enzyme in the in the moderate concentration so that values we have to provide <coughs> okay next uh, we have to uh, find the trend also how much is change from lower concentration to moderate concentration moderate concentration to higher concentration that we have to find it we have to compare in between concentrations also we have to compare between the controls and the uh, experimental groups sometimes we use the correlation studies there also we have to compare how uh, one uh, variable uh, changes with the other variable so we have to give the trend so we give the trend by comparing and by performing the correlations like that we provide the trend okay this is the quantitative data information followed by the trend also we have to give it so uh, statistical analysis then so in statistical analysis uh, so we uh, usually provide uh, whether uh, when you uh, when you find a trend between uh, the groups or when you find a trend between the control and experimental groups so you this trend may be a significant or may not be significant that means that change may be a, a, a significant or may not be a significant maybe that change is really a, a change it's really a significant change or may not be a significant change so to confirm that we also mention the statistical uh, statistical information about that particular uh, trends that is also important finally we give our conclusion from all our uh, experimental data from all experimental data suppose uh, it at a high concentration the enzyme activity is <coughs> uh, the, at a high concentration of the metal the enzyme concentration is uh, decreased um, very much so we mentioned that the highest concentration metal uh, highest concentration of metal causes a very significant reduction of the uh, enzyme activity so that is uh, the conclusion that we provide again so also we provide the visual representation so that means we provide that data in a table form or we uh, represent the data in a graph form so this is a uh, very important so these nine elements uh, are very important uh, when you write the result section so in our next video i will explain what are the elements uh, that 
you have to mention your discussion section so that your research paper is accepted by the repeated journals thank you